Okay, thank you everyone for uh, coming along today. I know we're on the uh, last day of the conference, so I'm sure you've sat through uh, many sessions, and I'll try to keep this uh, as entertaining as possible so you guys stay attentive for this one-hour session. Uh, my name is Joe Swarfield. Uh, I am responsible for our EMEA strategic alliances at translations.com. Uh, today, also presenting with me is my colleague, Dave Evkare, who is one of our product managers. Um, Guys, we like to try and keep these interactive, so if you do have some questions as we're going along, please feel free to put your hand up, or if you want to save it for the end, I have no problem with that either. So I want to start off with a quote we've got here. Um, this is from one of our enterprise customers, HP. Uh, Translations.com combines speed, security, and accuracy with impressive global scale to help facilitate a coordinated and successful global product launch. The reason we've included this quote today is because we want to show how we can work with our enterprise level customer on a global scale and how we can uh, make sure we meet those needs uh, with the requirements when they're looking to do a global rollout. So here's a slide about an overview of translations.com. So we've been around since 1992, um, so over 25 years now. Uh, today we now have actually over 4,000 employees. The slide needs to be updated. Um, so as I mentioned, we're able to meet the complex needs of our customers and we're able to scale with them. Um, we support over 170 languages today. So when it comes down to the services side of what's required from a translations company, you know, we've had the uh, toughest of requests, even the likes of Swahili to be translated into. We have the linguist pool to uh, need these type of services. We have over 90 offices uh, in the cities worldwide, which actually helps us to provide uh, global customers 24-7 service when required. Uh, you can see from there, from our figures, last year we generated over half a billion dollars in revenue, and this continues to increase year on year at the moment as well. So with regular qu profitable quarters, it means we're able to actually invest a significant amount of money into our technology. And this allows us to continue to innovate be an industry leader as well. So Global Link is our technology that we're talking about today. I'm not going to go into too much about that. Uh, we can explain that outside of this type of presentation. But it's easy for us to continue reinvest into our technology when there are over 4,000 companies using it. Of course, they're always looking for new features, benefits, and ways to improve their processes. So our tech is very battle-tested. It stood up to the toughest of customers, their demanding requirements, and we understand the problems that are faced in the world handling large amounts of content to be translated and have built a flexible platform over the past 18 years. We also have 200 full-time developer and support staff. So these are people who are full-time in-house, constantly working on building our technology as well. Uh, you can see at the bottom here, we say that our technology is modular components. So this means that depending on your requirements, we can build on the simplest sort of tech to make sure you can push your translations through and bring it back into your desired target page, um, but also can build on this using some additional features, um, which we can go into a bit more detail about later on. So what's the point of our technology? The advantage of using Global Link, like I know with most technology in this space, is to make sure that it's better, faster, and cheaper. We all know this from all the stuff that we've been providing to our customers as well. But in the translations world, it can be very messy with the stream, with the workflows that they have, and therefore our tech aims to uh, help streamline this workflow overall. So at the very heart of our technology is something that we call translation memory. Um, just from everybody in the crowd today, a show of hands, who's heard of translation memory before? So that's three, I'd say just under half then. Okay, great, uh, thanks. Let me explain to you a bit more about how translation memory works. Uh, we've built uh, translation memory into our system uh, to help our customers never pay for the same translation twice. Uh, it's been recognized to match when a piece of translation sentences or phrases have been put through our tech. Um, basically, we have two different types for this, fuzzy matches and exact matches. A fuzzy match is where you have a sentence that could be very similar. Uh, for example, say, Joe's wearing a white shirt, uh, changes to Joe is wearing a purple shirt. 
then this means it's only one word in the sentence for a translator to actually go and edit. It's going to be far quicker for them. When they go into the system, they can see that this has been changed beforehand, only click on that one word, and then do that exact translation. The other part is the exact match. This is when it matches 100% the way it was beforehand. Um, and then they're able to go on there and prove if it fits into the context of the translation that was there. So this all means that it's going to be reduced times for the translator. It helps to improve the quality and consistency of the messaging. Um, it means that obviously they're paying less for this translation overall and gives a faster time to market as well. So why have we created this technology? Now, this is a roadmap we like to show of the manual translation process, which is, uh, as you can see, has many steps and can be pretty complicated. Um, it's hard for people to understand exactly how this manual translation process works when there's so many different people involved. Um, and it's very hard to understand sometimes how much money is being spent on this process when it's not being centralized uh, by one team. So for the digital experience, there are many multiple different technologies used to make it happen. People are using e-commerce, using CMS platforms, possibly marketing automation, maybe even a PIM to go in the back of the e-commerce. Uh, if each repository has a workflow like this, and then across, say, 10 different languages, and all across different websites, then this just isn't scalable. That's why we have created our technology to help streamline this workflow um, and we have a video we'll show you very shortly about how we've done this. I'd like to highlight one part of this roadmap here. You can see where we have a break here, just down the bottom left-hand corner. Um, it means that in this manual translation process, there's a high chance of risk, which can add delays and adds further costs and obviously further problems for the customer in the end. So we actually have two main types of implementation. Um, one is our out-of-the-box solution. Um, what we say out-of-the-box, but more about connector type solution. Um, obviously, nothing's really out-of-the-box nowadays. And then uh, the other, other is our proxy solution, which is uh, OneLink. So very briefly, I want to talk through our OneLink solution. Um, and then we're going to show you, as I said, a very short video about how our connector works, uh, particularly for Drupal. So uh, OneLink enables organizations to launch global websites in as little as 30 days and maintain dynamic and frequently changing content across all langu languages with a single click. So we pull the content from your web server and using your source language website, and this goes to our OneLink server and then sent to be translated by professional certified translators. So you can see here then it pulls it back goes into uh, the web server again, back out onto your platform, and then goes out into the desired target language, translated. I'm gonna show you now a quick video on our Drupal connector. When you're faced with the challenge of translating digital content, you have a few choices. You could do it the old-fashioned way, with screenshots and copy-paste. You could implement a standalone translation management platform, but you'd still need to transfer the content into your systems manually. Or you can use a technology that ties directly in with your existing software and makes the entire process simple. That technology, the one that makes life easy, is Global Link Connect. Global Link Connect seamlessly integrates with Drupal making it user-friendly and intuitive to submit content for translation, track progress, and go live, all in a familiar interface. And thanks to native translation memory support, Global Link Connect enables faster timelines and increases cost savings. There's no need to learn new software or to train your teams on new procedures. You can manage the entire process from submission to delivery within your Drupal UI. Copy and paste is dead. Potential customers can be anywhere, and your content needs to be where they are. With Global Link Connect, you can be everywhere. So I hope that's given you uh, an idea about, well, a very brief overview about how this uh, connector works. Uh, very shortly, Babev will be taking you through in a bit more detail, uh, well, a lot more detail about exactly how that features works as well. So, 
a bit more details about uh, Translations.com and our partnership with uh, Drupal. So we've been partnering with Drupal. Well, we've been working with Drupal for over five years now. Uh, it was about four years ago that we saw that Acquia was surfacing uh, a lot of the enterprise level accounts that we were working on as well. Um, and this is when we decided we needed to engage Acquia to build a partnership uh, and then to understand exactly how to work with the Drupal ecosystem. And uh, they helped us to then build our module to update our connector. Uh, so today, that's now been approved by uh, the Drupal community. So you can find it on drupal.org. Today, we're actually supporting both versions, uh, Drupal 7 and 8. And we also have uh, been working on over 116 sites at the moment. So um, we built our way into the Drupal community for our partnership with Acquia. Um, today, we now have over 50 shared accounts, Drupal. Um, as I say earlier, we're supporting uh, some of uh, our global customers with 24-7 tech support. And uh, you can find out some more information if you actually visit our module online. Um, so that's really uh, it on the tech side. I know you guys, sorry, on the business side of things, I know you guys are probably more interested in actually uh, seeing more about our technology. So um, we're going to run you through our module today. We're not going to talk too much about translation memory, uh, vendor management, or the rest of that platform. But if you guys are interested in talking a bit more about that, we do have a booth uh, here today that we are sponsoring. Uh, it's booth 15. So please call by, uh, see some of the couple of the guys for the rest of the remaining hours that we have for today. I'm going to hand you over to Vebav now to take you through our module. And then uh, let's do some question answers at the end. Thanks, Jeff. So, let me just set this up. So, hi everyone, I'm Vaibhav, and I've been working with uh, Drupal integration since Drupal 6 days, handling multilingual uh, modules. I built the first one uh, way back in Drupal 6 when there was only no, there were no entities, uh, no concept of entity translation. There was everything content-based. Uh, today, I'm gonna show you how seamless and how easy it is now with Drupal 8 to uh, manage your day-to-day -day translation and localization work. Uh, as we all know, the multilingual content has been the core part of Drupal 8 architecture, and a lot of been, uh, work has been done on it. And uh, it's now very easy to add new languages and just launch your site into any language and just make it live. And that's where we come in. And with the help of Global Link plugin, it's even easier to translate and get your site up and running quickly. And so managing translation in Drupal 8 uh, is very easy. It's thanks to the translation management module, which is like the go-to module for all the community now. And uh, in Drupal 8, it, it gives you uh, a plugin uh, provider approach where we act as a provider to translation management module and where you can translate the content and anything related to that, your site, uh, into any language. So let me start by showing you what you need to do to get this module running. So translation management module is the one uh, you need to install. All you can see it, it comes with a core and a lot of other modules. So all you need to do is just enable this module and then enable the, install the global link uh, module from our side. Once this is done, you will see the translation staff where you can you have a list of uh, sub tabs uh, for handling all your translation needs. Uh, so once you have installed our module, you will see us as, as a provider listed here. And in order to connect to our services, all you need to do is go inside this provider, add the configuration details, uh, map the languages, and once you have an account with us, we can provide you with all these details and 
and you can set it up right away. Once uh, this is set up, you are uh, ready to translate all your content from the Drupal uh, into any languages. So uh, before uh, I'll show you, let's, let's create a content quickly. Uh, let's create an article and I have this, say, Drupal code. here let's add a custom menu and I have a paragraph which is great and let's save and publish so now you have created a, an English content uh, which is live and published but now you want to translate this into whatever languages that are enabled on your site so as you see, we have a card option. This translation management tool uh, comes with a card option where you can just, whenever your content creator creates a content, they can go into uh, the translate tab and add the content to this card. And at the end of the day or maybe end of the week, your localization manager or whoever maintains the translation jobs can go in the card, look at it, and send it everything out for translation. Uh, so. This is one way of doing it, or you can go directly to the uh, sources tab under translation, where you can see the list of all the contents that are available in your uh, Drupal site. It, it gives you a com comprehensive dashboard along with the languages on what uh, languages require translation, what is already translated, uh, what is uh, translation is outdated. So you, you get a fair bit of idea of what, uh, how the translation what content requires translation and what does not. And you can also you know, translate every other part of your site that, that is localizable, maybe entity uh, 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 menu or taxonomy or blocks. So anything you can choose from here and then select it and just submit it for translation. So yeah, it loads. So let's look at the content that we created. You just create this DrupalCon Vienna article. <coughs> it's not translated into any language. We'll just select this and then click on request translation. Once, it, once we click on this, it takes you to the provider page where uh, you can see the global link as a provider. And here you select the language in which you want to translate. It will tell you the number of words, how many words are there. And all you need to do is just add some instructions for the translation. Maybe just you know tell the due date when you want it to be completed. Uh, a cool part is about this is you can load suggestions. So if you click on load suggestion, it will also tell you uh, anything that is related to this article or content, uh, which is part of your site and it requires translation as well. So you can select. So you can see that it's a menu which we created with the article. If if it uh, if you want, you can translate that as well. So let's just add that as well to the job. So now this job, translation job, has two uh, content, one the custom menu link, and then the content we created. And you see the number of words now got updated. And now when we do a submit to provider, this is the time when our plugin will get the content from uh, Drupal and export it to our system for translation. And once the job gets submitted for translation, it is now uh, somebody on the translation sites will translation.com site will work on this uh, job, and once this is completed, you will get notified, and it can be within hours or within minutes if it's based on machine translation or within days based on the con uh, based on the content size. So, let's go to the jobs here. So in this jobs, you can see what all jobs you have created for translation. This is the one we just created. It has words, uh, it shows it's in progress. Uh, if we go inside this, we can see uh, all the items that are part of the jobs. Here, uh, you have the option to pull translation. So if the translation is completed on our end, it will automatically pull uh, the translation back into Drupal. So let's click on it. For the sake of this demo, we have just enabled some test translation for this content. Uh, 
So let's give it a second. So it says that is German is finished and we have enabled the review mode. So in the review mode in translation management uh, tool, it will not get saved directly as a, as a content. It will wait in a review phase where anybody, uh, a Drupal reviewer can go in uh, and uh, review the content. So let's go and check this out. So, so a reviewer can log in here and click on review and you can disable this step if it's not required. You can see that it's, it's translated in some, uh, some text in German. Uh, if you're happy with it, you can say save as completed or if you want to modify it and update it, you can do that as well. And once you do save as completed, let's do that for other one. You see the menu is also completed. And once this is completed, I go back to my content. You see a uh, German content has been created. And this is my English. I go to translate. So my German is created, it's published. And I also have the menu that has been selected and it's part of uh, this page and translated and completed. So this is like a, a quick uh, overview of the workflow, how the translation uh, actually works. Uh, and with translation management tool and with Global Link as a plugin, it's very easy uh, to, to export all your translation uh, requirements to translation.com and get it completed as soon as possible. So if you have any questions uh, regarding the workflow or anything regarding the translation management tool, just let me know. questions um, first is how to handle interface translation yes so in the if you go to the sources tab you have all the s site stuff that requires translation so you have uh, configurations you have menu you have taxonomy so all the interface strings are also translatable using this interface so let's me see and the other one that I had is uh, is a resolution for a use case when each uh, language version is a separate instance of Drupal uh, you mean the multi-site one yeah mm, I think it's yeah it should, should handle that translation management tool will handle it so so each so the, the worst case, you can install uh, each module on the different uh, instance, mm -hmm. if, if that is uh, how you want to work, and then just translate from, from there. And all we need is uh, the configuration details from our end, and it, it will connect to it. Okay, so it's possible to, let's say I have separate English site and separate German site, so mm -hmm. it's possible to send notes from translation from one instance and then pull from the other, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Any more questions, guys? Does anybody here then actually work on a multilingual web project with Drupal? The six lines? Yeah. Yep. Are you guys getting clients or? I think you must be talking about Drupal 7 then. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Drupal 7, uh, we had our own custom module where uh, 
we were supporting it uh, for, and but in Drupal 8, we have decided to go with the community translation management tool, and this is a community module. Yeah. So we are now actively working with the community uh, to you know to build new features and uh, yeah. add new support to it. So I, I would imagine. Yes, and we have seen that Drupal 7, uh, you know, it's because we have to keep on adding support for multiple modules based on the client, you know, what client is using, what modules they are using for content creation. And over the period of time, we have realized, you know, it's, it's hard to do that because, and with Drupal 8, a lot of effort has been gone into translation management tool, and we work with uh, MD systems directly. With, yeah. And uh, so, we now we, we we have decided this approach since beginning that no we are not uh, going to do we'll go with the provider approach and we will uh, support the TMGMT in whatever way we can yeah yeah i mean the, like this was the and if anybody wants to ask other questions jump in i can have this conversation later but um, TMGMT is important because the api for drupal is so deep now yes. no one group is going to ever implement everything that's required so all of these translation companies that have been rolling their own translation interface have really been struggling. Like, you, know, you see that with the Drupal 7 version where you have a separate plugin for every kind of entity that exists mm -hmm. instead of using just this one common interface for, for everything. And uh, you know, I've been making a little push uh, with uh, Lindo Tech. Not uh, with others, only who are part of the TMGMT group. Gotcha. So just you guys and TMGMT. Yes. Yeah. Um, so that's like there needs to be more. Uh, there, there needs to be collaboration. In this yes. Case. Like you guys have good ideas for how languages, you know, how language definitions should be shipped back and forth. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, they may not all be implemented in TMGMT. Mm. Yeah, and that is that is what we have decided since Drupal 8 uh, came out, yep. uh, that we are not going to build a separate module because, and we have uh, worked with MD systems when whatever a client uh, have requested, and if any feature is missing or if we feel that new functionality needs to be added, then we, we push for it uh, and we sponsor the development as well. So, yep. uh, So that is the approach we are following in Drupal 8 and actively working with the community and getting involved. Yeah. Any plans to backport the TMGMT support to 7? Uh, not at this moment. I mean, if... Patches accepted. <laughs> <laughs> if, uh, yeah, I mean, if, uh, if there are clients who are not willing to move from 7 to 8, like we have a lot of clients who have invested a lot on Drupal 7 and they are still hesitant to move to Drupal 8 because there's a lot of investment from their side. Yeah. So, yeah, maybe we can think about it. Yeah, I know like Adaptive, I don't think we'll move to 8 for a while, so, yes. yeah, but they, they Most of the enterprise clients we, we work with, uh, you know, have invested a lot of time and money in Drupal 7. Yeah. So it's gonna take a while for at least for next year or so before they move to Drupal 8. Yeah, but the Yes. Yeah. All right. If you need help. <laughs> sure. Thanks. So we're sorry, what was your name again? Uh, I'm Chris. And you're in freelancing at the moment, or you work in? Chris. <laughs> uh, anybody else have any other questions at all? Maybe from the business side of things, I've said something earlier about my, my boy's future. Yes. Yeah. Well, Please, 
Yeah, I'm actually from the business side. Okay. I come from World Field Services, which is a top 100 Fortune company in the United States. Um, we actually looked into you guys, translations, and we actually looked in Lingo Tech. Right now we're in Drupal 7, but most likely we're going to move into Drupal 8 next year. Um, as part of that, I'm not only looking for translations for our websites, I'm also, we're also using Eloqua as our email marketing tool. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking as a one-stop shop for translations, not just for my websites. Mm -hmm. Are you guys thinking, because when I talked to you guys back two years back, um, you guys didn't have that option yet. Are you guys looking into doing Eloqua translations? We, we have already have a uh, uh, Eloqua connector uh, in production right now. Like okay. With a few clients using it, so we okay. definitely support Eloqua and even more other marketing uh, tools. Okay. So, so would you say that we should wait until we move into Drupal A then to start this? I will not say you to wait. I will say go with because I don't want to double pay. So. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, when you're looking at migrating over to Drupal A, probably to next year we were trying to push this year, mm -hmm. but we ran out of budget. So um, most likely next year, we are really doing a big push because we didn't worry at that time for multi-language, but one of our companies, which is multi-service, is widely known in Europe. They're looking into various forms of languages that they currently have, mm -hmm. and we're trying to move them over. We have over 64 websites plus, right? We keep growing. Um, we only have 22 in our Drupal instance, but we're trying to get them all into one common platform, which mm -hmm. is Drupal. With that being said, I have to make sure that from our product requirements that I meet their requirements when it comes to multi-language. Mm -hmm. So it, it's interesting, this whole thing. So yeah, I think it's safe to say we're supporting both Drupal 8 and Eloqua. Um, we have over 40 different connections today, so it's pretty well spread out across the market. Mm -hmm. um, but when was it, you say, two years ago? Last yeah, two years back, yeah, I talked to the, because I come from Miami, so in the Miami office. Yeah, yeah I talked, I don't remember the name of the guy, but. Yeah, but back then, you know, we were very hesitant because not only the cost, because it, it's a lot of money, right? Yeah. So, um, but yeah, so I probably, maybe a card. So I, I actually manage the Eloqua connector as well, so why don't you stop by the booth and we can, yeah, I can definitely. talk to you about yeah, it. Yeah, we'll head the session. We can, uh, okay, the yeah, Sorry. yes, so, thank you. Okay. Any more questions, guys? Well, there you go, the fascinating world of translations.com. <coughs> it's nothing special, you know, it's translations at the end of the day, but this sort of tools do save large enterprise customers mass amounts of money. Um, it's pretty unknown sometimes when you have this manual translation process, really where all your spend is going to, people using internal people to do the translations for them. So uh, if you are coming across the right clients or these type of projects, then please do take some information from the back. My card's there as well. Uh, feel free to reach out to us. We have to give you a demo at any point if you guys are agencies. I'm actually really responsible for our partnership program. So we do partner with lots of guys in terms of helping set you up with free access to our sandboxes and then also looking at how we can help you guys with your commercial parts as well. So uh, thank you very much for attending the session today. Hope you enjoy the uh, rest of DrupalCon, the short amount of time we have left. And I uh, hope you all have safe travels home as well. Thanks, guys.